We have seen in the previous video how to map the impedance or the normalized impedance plane to the reflection. Okay, and such mapping will introduce what we call Smith chart. And in such a Smith chart, the real axis on the normalized impedance plane, which lies from R normalized equal zero to infinity, will be mapped in this Smith chart from gamma equal minus one to gamma equal one, where gamma equal minus one corresponds to real impedance equal zero or short circuit, and gamma equal one corresponds to real impedance equal infinity or open set. On the other hand, if I am talking about constant R normalized equal one, means that if I have an impedance which is R normalized plus Gx normalized, and the value of R is fixed to one, and the value of x is varying from minus infinity to infinity, this will correspond to a vertical line in the impedance plane sent from minus infinity in x to plus infinity in x. Such line would be mapped on the reflection plane as a circle. Such circuit will intersect with the real axis at the point gamma equals zero, such that when the input impedance would be one, the normalized input impedance would be one plus zero, and the reflection coefficient would be z normalized minus one over z normalized plus one, so the reflection coefficient would be zero. So this point corresponds to this point. And if we add a reactance in positive, so in this case, the reflection coefficient will be mapped as a half of our cycle until it reaches to gamma equal unity at x equal infinity. On the other hand, if we map the line when r equal unity and x extend in the negative side, will be mapped on the gamma plane as a lower half circle such that the end of the lower half circle would reach gamma equal 1 when x equal minus infinity. So, this vertical line with constant r equal 1 corresponds to this circle in the gamma plane. In a similar way, if we have a horizontal line such that the value of x is constant and equal positive 1, and the value of r is increasing from zero to infinity, the reflection coefficient corresponds to the different points on this line would correspond to this r in the gamma plane. So this r will correspond to constant x equal one. And this circle will correspond to constant r equal one. And everything on this message chart should be normalized. So this x in x normalized and r normalized. Similarly, if the value of x is minus 1, so x normalized minus 1 would be this r. So assuming that we are talking about the point r equal 1 and x equal 1. So in the impedance plane, we are moving along the value of r equal 1 value r equal 1 and we see the intersection with x equal 1 in the gamma plane or in the Smith chart we are moving along the circle r equal 1 and the r x equal 1 the r x equal 1 and we see the intersection point this intersection point 
will correspond to the impedance R normalized equal 1 plus X normalized equal 1. And the reflection coefficient in this case would be assuming that the radius here is unity. So the value of the radius would correspond to the amplitude of the reflection coefficient. And the phase from the real axis would correspond to the phase of the reflection coefficient. As a numerical example, assume that we have an impedance 25 ohms plus G 100 ohm. And this is connected to a transmission line whose characteristic impedance is 50 ohm. So the normalized impedance, the first step in using a Smith chart is to normalize the impedance. Normalize the impedance with respect to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. So the normalized impedance would be Z over Z0 would be 0.5 plus J2. Now if we are interested to allocate this point on the gamma plane in the Smith chart, we move along the real axis until we reach 0.5. So this is 0, this is 1, this is infinity. So from 0 to 0.5. We reached 0.5. Now this circle, this blue circle, correspond constant R equal 0.5. We want to allocate the point of the reactant G2. This is positive. So the positive reactance is allocated at the upper half of uh, the Smith chart. So we are looking for a point on the upper half. The lower half corresponds to negative imaginary bar. So this is positive imaginary bar. Okay. So we are going to move along a constant R here until we intersect with the R which correspond to Gx2. This red arc correspond to G2. So the intersection between the real value 0.5 and the imaginary value G2, this intersection correspond to the allocation of the normalized impedance here on this message chart. Now, from the center of the Smith chart, if we connect the center to the point of the impedance, this value corresponds to the magnitude of the reflection coefficient. And if we draw a circle with this radius, this would correspond to the constant gamma or constant reflection coefficient circle. And effectively, this constant coefficient circle has a very important application. So, in general, once we allocate the point, we draw the constant reflection coefficient circle. Okay. To obtain the reflection coefficient, usually, we have some ruler at the end of uh, the Smith chart. This rule is actually calibrated such that the value of the radius of this circle is normalized to be 1. So every point on this rule would be the ratio of this radius to this one would correspond to the magnitude of the reflection coefficient. So by drawing the constant gamma circle until it intersects with the real bar or the real axis and then we draw a normal line to the real axis from the point of the intersection we can find out the point of intersection in the rural of the reflection coefficient so we can find the magnitude of the reflection coefficient in the rural in this case to be, to be 0.8246 so this is the magnitude of the reflection coefficient on the other hand we can find 
scaling for the angle on uh, the outer side of this message chart and according to this scaling the angle from the real axis to the uh, to the line connecting the origin to the impedance point this corresponds to the phase of the reflection coefficient so in using this method chart the first step is do normalization of the impedance determine constant r the blue circle determine constant x the red arc from the intersection of constant r and constant x this would be the corresponding point of the impedance on this message chart connect the line from the origin of this message chart to the point of the impedance and extend it to be outside of this message chart then draw the constant gamma circle which has a radius from the center of this message chart to the point of uh, the normalized impedance so draw the constant gamma circle this dashed line is a constant gamma circle and determine the intersection of the constant gamma circle with the real axis from the intersection of uh, the constant gamma circle with the real axis draw normal lines until you reach to the rurals below this method chart from these rurals you can determine different items as we will see in the following slides okay so till now from this problem we could obtain that the reflection coefficient for such load would be 0.8246 with a phase shift 50.9 degrees so just by mapping the impedance on this message chart we could calculate the magnitude and the phase of the reflection coefficient this instead of using the complex mathematics z load minus z node over z load plus z node. Okay. Now assuming that this impedance we are interested to find the input impedance after a distance d equal lambda by four. And effectively, lambda by 4, it means that we have a phase shift 180 degrees. So, by moving along the constant gamma circle by an angle 180 degree, we can allocate the new point or the new impedance or the input impedance in this case. And to read the input impedance in this case, we need to read what is the constant r circle intersect with this point and what is the constant x r intersect with this point so according to these values we can find out the input impedance the normalized input impedance at z equal lambda by 4 it would be 0 0.117 Assuming that the arc here is 0.117 and uh, sorry, the circuit 0.117 and the arc is minus j.47. The arc we will read the arc here would be minus j.47. This is the normalized impedance to obtain the actual impedance. We multiply the normalized impedance by z naught so. And keeping in our minds Z naught it was 50 ohm, so we multiply this normalized impedance by 50 ohm to obtain the value of the impedance in this case. Effectively, 
we have calculated here is the input impedance at the distance lambda by 4 which corresponds to a phase shift 180 degrees we can calculate it at any distance z equal minus d and at any distance z equal minus d we will calculate the phase shift beta 2 beta d and from the 2 beta d by moving clockwise we determine the input of the impedance by the intersection of the line with the constant gamma circle okay so this is another advantage of the constant gamma circle which I advise you to draw it once you determine the location of uh, the normalized impedance in general you will find uh, the Smith chart in this form this is effectively uh, the most inner circle is the Smith chart and all these circles outside the Smith chart correspond to different scales we are going to study these scales each one and in addition we have some rules below the Smith chart to use these rules as I mentioned by determining the point of the impedance draw the constant gamma circle and from the constant gamma circle just take a vertical line or normal line and see the intersection with these rulers and from these rulers we can read the value directly this is a map of the half or lower half of the Smith chart uh, as I mentioned we have different words here and we have different scales on this side the rulers I have magnified the words we see that this upper rule corresponds to the standing wave ratio so if you are interested in reading the standing wave ratio directly you just take the vertical line and read it from the first rule here and we can see that the minimum value of the standing wave ratio is unity 1 and the maximum value of the standing wave ratio is infinity the lower side of the first word is the standing wave ratio in dB if you are interested the value standing ratio, uh, wave ratio in dB which is uh, 20 look to the power 10 the value of the standing wave ratio Uh, the most lower rule, this one, corresponds to the value of the reflection coefficient, gamma. And as we see, the minimum value of gamma is 0, and the maximum value of gamma is 1. So, this is the lower one, is the amplitude of the reflection coefficient. If we are interested in the reflection coefficient from the point of view of power, not voltage, so B reflected over B incident, we are interested in the second ruler on the lower side. So the second ruler on the lower side corresponds to the power reflection coefficient, not the voltage reflection coefficient. This is power reflection coefficient. This is B reflected over B incident instead of B reflected over B incident. Effectively, B reflected over B incident equals V reflected over B incident square. So this value is the square of this value. Okay. And the other side of the second rule represent the return loss or the reflection loss in dB 
so this is uh, 20 look to the base 10 of the reflection coefficient t so by using this set of rules we can obtain the standing wave ratio the standing wave ratio in db the return loss in db the bar reflection coefficient and the reflection coefficient effectively the other side correspond to the transmission coefficient and transmission bar coefficient and uh, standing wave b coefficient and reflection loss in db and attenuation and so maybe you are not interested in this side right now because we are basically interested in the reflection coefficient so in this case we are going to use this side basically we are going to use the reflection coefficient of e or i which correspond to p reflected or i reflected over i incident and the standing wave ratio right on the other hand we have different scales around this message chart effectively uh, this scale correspond to the angle phi this angle of the reflection coefficient starting from 0 to 90 to 180 so effectively this corresponds to the angle directly so if you are interested to determine the angle just connect a point from the center of this message chart which corresponds to the origin of the gamma plane until you reach to the other side and see the intersection with this ruler and we can find the angle phi Now, if we are moving toward a generator, if we are moving wavelengths toward a generator, it means that we are moving away from the load. So we are moving in this way. So we are moving in clockwise. So these values correspond to the distance away from the load toward the generator in terms of the wavelengths and it should be noted that half the cycle corresponds to lambda by 4 so half the cycle corresponds to 0.25 lambda so this outer scale corresponds to the distance towards the generator or in other words the distance away from the load so assuming that we have certain point of impedance for example at this point and this would correspond to a line coming to this point and we are interested to find out the input impedance after a specific distance away from the road so we read this value and then we are going to add the distance we need to add after the load uh, so this would be for example 0.16 and assume that we want to move a uh, distance 0.1 lambda so 0.16 plus 0.1 uh, lambda it would be 0.26 we are going to move until 0.26 and then connect the line to 0.26 and the intersection with the constant gamma would be the corresponding new impedance so the most outer axis correspond to the distance away from the loop. Okay, so we have now this axis of angles correspond to the phase of the reflection coefficient, and the most outer axis corresponds to the distance away from the loop. In a similar way, if we are moving anti-clockwise anti-clockwise if you are moving anti-clockwise on this scale
moving yes on this scale this point o4 point o5 point o6 point o7 if we are moving anti-clockwise we are moving towards the load we are moving toward the load so for example if i am standing at a specific point on the transmission line and i am moving from this specific point towards the load so what will be the new input impedance now i'm moving towards the load not away from the load so uh, in this case we are moving on this axis this axis correspond to the second one all right so this second one correspond to move wavelengths towards the load motion towards the load okay so we have the angle we have moving away from the load we have moving towards the load in addition to the different rules below this mixture these uh, scales are quite useful to combine everything for the load along the transmission